Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Definitely Gospel Centered. I am your host, Gabby Duke, and today is another uh, unique episode following up on our last episode two weeks ago where we started studying the passage of Luke 15. We dived into the first two verses last time, and now we're going to be diving into verses three through seven. So to kind of refresh you guys on what we talked about in the first two verses last episode, we were looking at the Pharisees and some of their statements and comments that they made and how Jesus responded to their those comments. Uh, I think what's so crucial though to remember is how Jesus was socializing and engaging with the sinners of that community and how the Lord Jesus cared about people. He cared about their future and not just about what people would think of him socializing with these sinners. He cared about the heart of man. So verses one through two shows us a beautiful picture of Christ and his great love for for us, for us as sinners, because all of us are sinners, right? And he loves us anyway. So now we're going to be diving into verses three through seven, and we're going to learn about pursuit, what that means, and what pursuing others looks like, specifically talking about the deaf community. So, so excited to teach this today. I hope you guys are ready. Um, Go ahead and actually go ahead and find your Bible and let's get ready because we're going to be in Luke 15 verses 3 through 7. So in this passage, Jesus is telling a parable and he says, what man among you who has a hundred sheep and loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open field and go after the lost one until he finds it. When he has found it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders. And coming home, he calls his friends and neighbors together, saying to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. And I tell you, in the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who don't need repentance. So, <laughs> uh, last episode, you know, we had only dived into two verses and now we have five to go into. So I hope you guys are ready uh, to dig in. But verse three starts with uh, this parable, right? It's a story that Jesus told. And this parable is a story that acts as a comparison, And that just means that Jesus was trying to show a concept. Uh, The Jews at that time typically explained things in that way, not wordy and lengthy, but very visually. But it's, it's very interesting to note that because that is something the deaf community, you know, does often and understands easily. And Jesus used that type of communication. He used stories to teach something, to show something, or to explain something. Um, I think oftentimes these parables we see, these stories used to make a point, they encourage us to think deeper and harder. Jesus didn't have a habit of just teaching uh, and making blanket statements or very bluntly. I think sometimes the deaf community is blunt with their opinions, But Jesus told stories to make his point, not just saying uh, this or that. He gives us a picture. He gives us a representation. He gives us uh, the ability to consider and to ponder deeply on the concept. Also at that time, just culturally speaking, people were not maybe as direct with certain things. So stories were used, and that's just important to know how they communicate at that time. Uh, 
But if we look at verses 3 through 5, Jesus starts telling us this parable of the shepherd who, if he has a hundred sheep and then loses one remaining 99, he leaves those 99 to go after that lost sheep. So one lost sheep goes astray. Now it's remember to take this in context at that time that Jesus was alive. Shepherds had an immense responsibility that really spanned the whole livelihood of the sheep. They had to lead the sheep for food. They had to lead the sheep to any type of body of water. The the shepherd had to lead the sheep to a a water source. If danger in any shape or form came up, it was the shepherd's responsibility to protect the livelihood of the sheep. And I'm sure that came with a lot of other responsibilities to care for these creatures. So the shepherds had some kind of deep care for the sheep that they watched. And I think that's very obvious to say because we see here that it's just kind of common day knowledge that if a shepherd loses one sheep, of course he will go after it. And then if you look at verse 6, we see the shepherd celebrate finding that lost sheep. He has immense joy in bringing that sheep back into the fold. But he doesn't just have this joy and keep it to himself. He immediately goes to all of his neighbors, to all of his friends, you know, exclaiming, Hey guys, I have found the lost sheep. Come celebrate and take part of my joy with me. Which is so exciting to see because if you look at verse 7, Jesus immediately connects this story, these emotions to heaven rejoicing for one sinner for one individual who has turned in repentance and this is better than the 99 who in this passage is the ones who don't need repentance so let's remember the goal with jesus sharing a parable right this story used for comparison it's for us to think to meditate Maybe to ask questions on what this means and to ponder what he means. So we need to think about, you know, who are the sheep in this story? Who is the shepherd in this story? What does the righteous people mean? And where am I? Where am I in this story? So we need to think about these things to really understand it. And we're going to take this and kind of dissect it bit by bit. But the lost sheep is a sinner, a sinner that needs salvation, a person who doesn't know who Jesus Christ is. And we'll talk more a little bit um, about Jesus in a second. So that's the first uh, who. The second who is the 99 sheep. Those are who have already been saved. They're already walking with Christ. And then the shepherd is Jesus. So Jesus is the shepherd in this story. He is pursuing all people in this story, the sinners, the lost, the ones who need him. I think it's so crucial for us to know who we are. Who are you in this story? Are you the lost sheep? Are you part of that 99 flock? You need to consider that. If you don't know who Jesus is, if he's not your shepherd, I want you to know that Jesus loves you. He cares for you. And I know this because Jesus loves all. He came to this earth to live a perfect life that we could not. And he died. He rose three days later, conquering death. He remained on this earth for 40 days and then ascended into heaven to be with the Father. And he did all of this so that we here on earth could have an opportunity to accept Jesus, to accept his sacrifice, and then enter heaven to live eternally with him. Heaven can only accept perfect people. And I think you know that you're not perfect. I think we all know that we're not perfect. But Jesus was, and he died that death, taking on our punishment, taking on our sin. He already paid the cost. He paid that substitutionary fee. 
now we have the opportunity to be in heaven one day, but also here on earth, we have hope. We have hope now. We have a relationship with Christ now, and there's so much to do, but not for our salvation. His salvation is a free gift for us, and it's it's amazing. It's amazing when you think about it, and I hope I hope you agree. So what does this mean? When we're looking at the self-righteous people, the righteous people that don't need repentance. So this means a person that feels they are uh, morally doing everything they're supposed to and that they are capable of being good enough and doing things right. But oftentimes... The people who think like that, who feel like they are better than thou type of mentality, they are, you know, they feel like they don't need a savior. They feel like they're okay where they are. They're good enough. They also sometimes feel like they deserve heaven because they're nice. They do good. They're polite. But remember that Jesus did everything right. He doesn't require us to do X, Y, Z, except to believe and trust in him. So verse three through seven applies two major things to us. So the first one being that Jesus is even right now pursuing lost people. And he has called his church and his people who have already turned to repentance to pursue the lost as well. It's so important to know who you are in this story, right? Remember, we had mentioned um, you are either that lost sheep that's gone astray, or you are part of that group of 99 that are already righteous. Obviously, we can't be Jesus. I know there's a third option. It does not apply to you. But it's important to really figure this out so you can move on to that next step of how you need to respond. But remember, Jesus came to this earth He died, he rose, and he returned to heaven. So he did all this. And if you believe that we can have an intimate relationship with him now, it doesn't matter what you've done wrong in the past. The Lord already knows and he loves you. He is a safe place to turn to. And if you look at verses three through seven, we had to think, what does this show us about ourselves? What does this show you about you. I need you to think about it. And I have two different perspectives to share. And one's going to be for the hearing church. So that's for you. The second is for deaf individuals. So it's going to be two vastly interesting uh, topics here. So if you are hearing and you go to a hearing church, I need you to know something about deaf people. Deaf people are just like you. They have the ability to work, to learn, to play, to laugh, to worship, to have an intimate relationship with God, to connect with other people, but they do not have equal access to the gospel. They don't. 98% of deaf people globally haven't heard about Jesus. It's an astounding number. And right now, worldwide, we have somewhere around 400 different sign languages. And right now, only one sign language has a full Bible translated. And that is an American sign language. That means there are 399 other signed languages that do not have a full Bible available to them. Sometimes reading is challenging for deaf individuals, and it's important to understand why. Because if they are reading a spoken language, that's most likely their second or maybe their third language that they know. So try to understand their perspective. Try to be in their shoes for a minute. Remember that sign language is most deaf people's primary mode of communication. It's oftentimes their heart language, if you will. Try to think like... If you live here in America, your primary language in reading is probably English. 
If you tried to read the Bible in Spanish or French, and maybe you studied either one of those languages, maybe it's a second language for you. Um, so maybe you could read it, but I mean, my primary language is English. I know, what a surprise. But even as I read the Bible in my first language, it's hard to understand. It's hard to understand the concepts. And trying to read something in my second or third language would be exceptionally challenging because the Bible is not easy to comprehend in the first place. It's important to have a Bible available in one's heart language, in one's first language, that they can truly understand um, mentally and emotionally. And the deaf community has many lost sheep. They do. So hearing people, hearing church, if you see a deaf individual that comes to your church service, or maybe you just meet them uh, randomly somewhere in the community, I just want to take a moment to encourage you to find a pen and paper and write something down and say hello, introduce yourself. Use your phone maybe to text out a text message to introduce yourself and, and smile, show kindness, be approachable. Remember that deaf individuals are extremely visual people, so you need to visibly show love. If you have an opportunity to learn American Sign Language, that's great. Take a class. You know, grab the opportunity when you can and learn. You never know when you might meet that deaf person and then you'd be able to communicate with them. Also, if you learn ASL, that is a better opportunity to be able to be engaging with that person. Remember, our goal is to show the love of Jesus, and we show the love of Jesus with kindness. We can do this. You can do this. And if you happen to work on staff at a church, think about how you would engage with a deaf person. And the best thing you can do is to ask a deaf person themselves. I'm telling you, deaf people know what they need. Also, if you are on staff at your local hearing church and you're thinking about, you know, how can I serve uh, the deaf community or deaf people? Well, I have a few suggestions for you. If you have deaf people already attending your church locally, ask them. Ask the deaf people present what they need. Maybe they're going to recommend certain things like having a certified interpreter. That's very important. Or having good lighting so they can see their interpreter. Maybe they need other types of visual supports. Or maybe they need really good seating up front so they can see the interpreter clearly and the pastor simultaneously. Maybe they want to read his lips or see his visual cues to follow along. I just want to encourage you guys to remember that Jesus does not require perfection. He doesn't. He says to go, to go to his people, to serve people, and to show his love and to represent him. He cares about deaf individuals. He cares about hearing individuals. And you don't need to be able to speak to show his love and to show the kindness of the Lord. So, Deaf people, now I want to talk to you for a minute. We know that parable of the lost sheep that we just studied on and how God pursues that lost person. The Bible shows us time and time again that Jesus pursues people who are oppressed, the ones who are neglected by society. God sees and recognizes you and he meets you where you're at. You are never abandoned from the Lord. He died for you. He died for your sin so that one day you may have eternal life with him. You have that opportunity to experience joy now in your salvation. You can. Uh, And to all of you deaf who are watching who are believers, who are saved, you are a shepherd in your own life right and you have a very important and heavy responsibility because you can connect with deaf people in a way hearing people just can't so it's so important for us to pursue deaf people in our community and i want to encourage our hearing viewers too 
God does not require uh, perfection. He doesn't, and he doesn't have a crazy expectation for you. He just asks you to go, and he will do the equipping. So hearing individuals, you are also shepherds, and I, I want to emphasize that. We all have a responsibility in this. But my encouragement to deaf believers is to start a Bible study or maybe start a book study and invite your deaf friends, invite deaf people that you know. Maybe you can do a book study about God or about his character, or maybe you can study a book from the Bible uh, and just dive into those passages. Or maybe, you know, go to deaf events in your local community. Try to meet new deaf people. Introduce yourself. Be a light for the Lord in those spaces. Or, or if you already are involved in your local church, serve your local church. Volunteer for things. Do it. Remember that God does not, um, or that rather, he doesn't call the equipped. He equips his called. That story has so much power that he just uses everyday people in amazing ways. So if you're watching and you can identify yourself in the story as a lost sheep, please reach out. I want to chat with you. If you have questions, if you have doubt, anything, uh, please don't hesitate to contact me. Please don't. I welcome your questions. I welcome your conversations. And we can ask the Lord together or do research for the Bible for answers as well. So thank you all for joining me today on this episode. I hope that you feel encouraged and I hope you are reminded of God's great love for you and how much he cares of you. You have so much value and you are important and you have a purpose. So hopefully we will see you guys very soon. Look for the next episode in two weeks. And uh, yeah, love you all so much. See you soon.